summer entertaining does not have to be stressful thanks to these easy, quick summer appetizers from Chef Brandy Alexander. She joins us here in the Charlie Wilson KitchenAid Kitchen to show us how it's done when the temps heat up. Right? Some of your best recipes come out. Good to have you, you know, back. I haven't seen you in a while. Yes. yes. Um, spring and summer are my favorite times of the year because of all of the produce. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I feel like vegetables kind of get a bad rep, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, if you jazz them up a little bit, you know, they can please anyone. And I think sometimes summer entertaining can be really stressful for people. Yes. I, it's it's stressful because it's so hot outside. Yeah. You know, you can't put potato salad outside. Yeah. It's going to get hot. And you, you don't want to crank up the oven or the yeah, stove. Yeah, you don't want to turn like your that. oven on. You don't don't want anything too heavy. Okay. You want something light, refreshing. Uh, finger foods are I really good for the summer. People can walk around the pool are, or outside. Are these some you've already tried out at some of the parties and the events that you cater? I have, yes. Um, this one down here, the uh -huh. stone fruit one, that's my favorite appetizer. It's been there for eight or nine years yeah. on my menu. Yeah. Um, yeah, all of these have, are I've done several times this mm, summer. Love it. Yeah. All right, so we're zeroing in on three of your top ones, beginning with the bruschetta. Bruschetta. Yeah, the first thing bruschetta? we're going to do. Yeah. Bruschetta? Yeah, Claudia asked me how to say it, and I told her I don't always say words right. Bruschetta. So we're bruschetta. making bruschetta. Okay, so what I start with is, of course, it's tomato season. Yes. Um, so we've got some local cherry tomatoes in here. Um, if it is not tomato season, still do the cherry tomatoes at the grocery store. They will be the best quality even okay. in the winter time. It's a little bit sweeter. Yes, smaller. the cherry tomatoes are always gonna um, have a fresher taste to them in the winter time. Oh, okay. Then we've got some local grown basil here. Okay. And some red onion. And of course we're gonna put some of Kinder's, Kinders. The Blend in it. Mm -hmm. It's got our garlic, our white and black pepper. And our tomatoes have some olive oil in there mixed in them too. Do you ever put um, vinegar in that or you tend to stay away from that because that can make the bread well, kind of soggy? Well, we are going to use vinegar here in just a minute. Okay. Um, I'm really big on sweet and savory and on mm -hmm. reduced vinegars. So what we do, we're gonna top our bread. Um, our bread is toasted and rubbed with raw garlic when it comes out. Mm. It's really hard. Um, so you wanna put the tomatoes on about 10, 15 minutes before. Um, and it'll soften just a little bit and still be really crunchy. And so you put the garlic on the French bread after it comes out of the yes, oven? Yes, when it comes out of the okay. oven, I take the raw garlic clove and rub right. directly on it while it's still hot. I love these tips and tricks that you have. And it'll, it won't have, you know, like a raw garlic taste, uh -huh. but it'll have the aroma. And then we're gonna put some shaved parm on. And then you asked about vinegar. Mm -hmm. We have our balsamic reduction. You can do this with just balsamic vinegar. Um, I like to use a little bit of local honey in it as well. Um, and all you need to do is put it on the stove, get it on a high simmer, and you want it to reduce down to a third of what it started as. So if you started with a cup of vinegar, you're gonna only end up with one third at the end. And that adds just that little punch to it. Probably softens up. Does that soften up the bread as well? Um, you know, it is more of a glaze. It's mm -hmm. a little sweeter. You know, it's not quite as acidic for the people who think they don't enjoy vinegar. Um, but the tomato really softens up the bread. These were made about 10 minutes ago. So if you try one of those, you know, the bread will still be crunchy, but the mm -hmm. middle soft too. Okay, can I try one? Yes, of course. All right, I know we're cooking other things, but you know, I'm not oh, going to yeah, resist I a chance to like, try your stuff. Oh. Mm. We got it all over our nose now, right? That's okay. Mm. I always have food That's all over me. Is. I love basil. I love, um, like I said, vinegars when so good. they're reduced. Um, I've had a lot of people who say they don't like vinegar and then they try one after, you know, you cook it down. It's a it combination. Takes, takes some of the tartness it out sure of it. It sure does. I love it. Love it. All right, next. Okay, next. our next one is um, a great way to get people to eat vegetables that okay. don't necessarily like them. Okay. Um, got my my picky eater son to eat asparagus. So we take our fresh asparagus. This is super skinny asparagus. Okay. So we're gonna use about five or six. Um, usually, like the normal size you get at the grocery, you'd use three or four, but these are super tiny. Are these already cooked or not cooked These yet? are not cooked. Okay. They are not cooked at They're all. Raw. Even if you have the fat ones, you're gonna use them raw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna take, you know, five or six of these little skinny ones if you wanna grab you a little bundle. Okay. And then you're gonna take prosciutto, and my tip for cutting your prosciutto, which is a pain in the butt, is to put it in the freezer for about five minutes, uh -huh. and then stack them up evenly on top of each other and cut them with a pair of scissors. 
And then if you do it while it's still pretty cold, the pieces will peel that, right apart from right each off. other. If you don't so do that, it's one. always so it's, stringy and it pulls stringy. apart and you feel like you're wasting. And you know, the good thing about it is it kind of sticks to each other. So even if it pulls apart. Okay, I'm gonna take the paper off. We don't wanna eat that. <laughs> we don't wanna eat that. So and just in the freezer for a little bit. Yes, and then we're gonna take it and we're gonna start like right under the floral end. Okay. And you're just gonna twist and turn all the way down your asparagus mm -hmm. until you have a cute little bundle. If you have like really big asparagus and you wanna do more, mm -hmm. um, you can do a whole slice on there. Okay. Yours I have is some really nice me. long ones here. Yeah, I know. That's so cute. And then all you have to do, you're gonna take a little bit of olive oil and just put on the asparagus mm -hmm. ends, sprinkle with your kinders. This is gonna go in a 450 degree oven for just eight minutes. Okay. Now, if you have the fatter asparagus, it'll be about 10, but I love this recipe because your oven's only on for 10 minutes. It's summertime, it's summer. hot outside. Look at that. It's crispy, and then this balsamic reduction is actually a golden balsamic and stone fruit. What, what is the difference? I've never heard of a so golden balsamic. So golden balsamic is the most delicious vinegar ever. You, really? It, you almost have to order it now because it's made with special grapes. Uh -huh. It's not expensive, um, but it has a totally different flavor profile and it Love goes those. really well with honey. I'm gonna try that. All and right. then we're gonna use it on these two. Stone fruit, these prosciutto stone fruit wraps. What is stone fruit? We're looking at the you video know, here. Of a how lot you made of people ask me that. What is stone what fruit? Is stone it fruit? is any fruit that has the a pit or stone in it. They're uh, technically a stone. Plums, peaches, peaches. plums, nectarines, cherries. Mm. Right now is stone fruit season. You can go into Kroger or Whole Foods and Everything's find on sale. all <laughs> kinds of cool, um, you know, exotic stone fruit right now. And when you when you pick it up, does it need to be a harder stone fruit? Like how ripe? Okay, how you don't want it hard. If it's hard, leave it on the counter a few days. You want it to be just softened a little. You don't want it to be mushy okay um, you can still kind of feel yeah. on this one right Which here is really great because sometimes when that happens in the house right they get a little soft you think yes. immediately let me throw them you out you want them to no, be a little soft you can make this um, and this time of year it's cool because like this is a pluot it's a plum and an apricot mixed together these are apriums which are apricots and plums okay and um, we've got white nectarines so there's all kinds of cool you know stone fruit out the there right now things i learn with branding <laughs> the things i learn and then same deal with the prosciutto put it in the freezer yes i uh, cut it in half Okay. Yes, we're not going to cook it this time. Okay. We're going to use it raw. Um, and you're going to take some of your favorite cheeses. This one is an apricot, which is a stone fruit. Oh, apricot Stinton oh, cheese. I see where you're going. I see where you're and going. And then we're going to take a nectarine. Here, I'll switch you sides since I already started over here on mm -hmm. this guy. Mm -hmm. And then you can just choose whatever fruit you want. This is a, a habanero jack cheese, so oh, super spicy. Yes. And then we're just going to throw um, a little bit of fresh herbs in with it. Which um, fruit do you think this would go best with? That would go well with honestly any of them, but I like the plum, the plum a lot with it. The plum's out. a little more sour. Mm -hmm. Okay, put that there. And then all you gotta do is. Oh my God, this is how you can put your kids to work to help for the summer entertaining yes. party. They could totally do this. They, I'm always thinking of ways to put them to work. And you know, when the kids and help learn. make it, they're more likely to try it too. Right. And if you've done that and it hasn't worked, have them do it with someone beside you. Mm. And then they'll start liking to do it with you too. Because I don't know what I'm doing. That's what they always say. Yeah, you right? know. Yeah, kids are. You know, my, my middle child, my picky one, has um, a chef as a mom, that. but he'd rather have someone else cook half the time. Look at <laughs> how beautiful that is. Yes, and you can use mint in here. Um, you can oh, use arugula. Yeah, you can choose whatever kind of cheese you want. And so if you do like a mint or an, well, either or, mint or arugula, because the tastes are very different. Yes. Um, the mint is really going to pop the flavor of the fruit, isn't yes. it? Yes. The mint is really good with this sweet apricot one. Um, some of the ones that I made, you know, before I came in have mint in there with the apricot. And then our reduction here has golden balsamic, balsamic, local that. honey, and then some rainier and bing cherries reduced down in it. Because oh, wow. cherries are stone fruits. Did you make this we, yourself? Yes. We can't really pit cherries and wrap them, you know, they're no. too small, but we can use them in the sauce. Love that. Is the, uh, do you have a sauce recipe online? 
I do. Anyways, I have. Um, I'm not trying to, to give you more work to do. No, but no, I'm just no. Saying, you I have both of these recipe. online. Okay. Um, my bruschetta recipe has the balsamic in it. Uh huh. This video is online as well. My stone fruit recipe has this one in it. Because I'm hooked on this. I'm like amazed by everything, but I'm so excited to kind of try a different kind of reduction. And this then this nice. one too during pear season. Uh, if you make a pear balsamic reduction, is really good, and do a few like little pickle pears and poached pears with it. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I, I, I want to try too. Oh, wait. I got a spicy one. You got a spicy one? Mm -hmm. I, oh, I it's pretty spicy too. Mm, I have the one with the peach in it. Oh my goodness. The apricot Stanton's really good. It's 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 really sweet for a cheese, but it, it works. Is. It is, but it's so light. So if you're outside burning up, this is like mm -hmm. so refreshing. Love it, love it, love it. So and this, all these recipes um, online and on your TikTok yes. and Instagram. Yes, uh -huh. and this one, this one's super spicy, but the sweetness of the nectar nectarine kind of mellows it out. Mm. All right, you're gonna stick around because coming up, more of this. You, we're just gonna eat and <laughs> coming gonna up, eat vinegar. <laughs> coming up, I was about to say we need a beverage with this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We need a beverage. That's what we're gonna do. I, do you like how I ask you the question right when you stuff yes, your Yes, I love she talking about in my mouth. We're gonna do a beverage coming we're up later. We're gonna do yeah, cold and summer apps next. We've got some cold summer apps. Watermelon gazpacho. We've got some cocktails and we have some cool fruit cube cocktails ice cubes. All right, stick around. That's coming up just a little bit later. We're gonna eat our way through this, clean up, but more coming ahead. To see more of Chef Brandy's mm. recipes and meals, visit southern flair dot com.